Hello, Lane here. Today I'm going to be reading Kwame's sound, and please stay tuned for the extra video that comes after this, uh, where Miss Mika will be showing you how to make a homemade drum. Here we go. Kwame Sound, an acoustical engineering story. Chapter one, Kwame and his drum. Thwack, boom, boom, ma, do, do. Kwame beat on the tightly wrapped skin of his drum. The rhythm thumped through the air like elephants marching through the forest. With each strike on the drum, he felt vibrations. Louder and faster he played, and the vibrations through his body grew stronger. They felt like the beating of his heart. Thwack, boom, boom, ma, do, do. Thwack, boom, boom, ma, do, do. Kwame's hands paused in midair. He turned towards the bedroom door where he heard his father's applause. Kwame's sense of hearing, touch, and smell were very important to him. He had been born blind. That sounds wonderful, Kwame, his father said. His voice was deep and rumbly. You will perform very well at Adwira this year. In Ghana, Adwira was a time for people to unite and prepare for the coming year. Last year at the festival, Kwame and his cousin Kofi held a large buma drum steady while their grandfather played a booming rhythm. But this year, Kwame would drum his own rhythm. I'm nervous, father, Kwame admitted. I wish that Kofi and I could practice together. Kofi lived far away in the same village as their grandfather. He would be playing Kwame's rhythm with him at Odwira. I have a surprise to take your mind off your nerves, Kwame's father said. We're going to meet a friend of mine. Kwame thought he knew who his father meant, his co-worker, Professor Payne. She was a biologist from the United States who traveled to Ghana for her research. Kwame's father was an acoustical engineer. He used his knowledge of math and science in creative ways to help people solve problems involving sound. He and Professor Payne were working on something called the Elephant Listening Project. Is it Professor Payne? Kwame asked. Will we get to visit the elephants? Maybe, his father said, but don't get your hopes up. Even if we go into the forest, we may not be able to hear and record the elephants. Despite their huge size, forest elephants are hard for scientists to see among all the trees and plants. Scientists like Professor Payne listen to them instead and use the recordings to track and count the elephants. For weeks, Kwame had been begging his father to take him to meet Professor Payne. He wanted to listen to her recordings of elephant noises. Maybe I can use these elephant sounds to improve my drumming rhythm, Kwame thought. He could barely contain his excitement as he followed his father out of the house. Chapter two, listening to elephants. The city buzzed with activity as Kwame and his father walked through the streets. Stepping into Professor Payne's home was quiet and calm in comparison. Hello, Kwame, Professor Payne said in a warm, high voice. It's nice to meet you. Kwame settled himself in a corner of Professor Payne's office. I hear you're excited to listen to some of our recordings. Tell me what you think of this, she said. Suddenly, the room was filled with loud elephant calls. Are those elephants? Kwame asked. They sound like trumpets blasting through the forest. They do, don't they? said Professor Payne. Here, Kwame, take this statue. Does the elephant's trunk remind you of anything? Kwame ran his fingers along the curves of the stone carving. It's like the bamboo flutes we make in school, he said. Laughing, he added, elephants have built-in trumpets, don't they? His father chuckled. That's true, but elephants don't always sound like horns. Elephants make some sounds that humans can't hear. How can something be a sound if we can't hear it? Kwame asked. Sounds are really vibrations, something moving back and forth, his father said. But as a drummer, you already know that. Yes, said Kwame. Sometimes it feels like the sound of my drum vibrates inside me. That happens when vibrations are slow and low. Some vibrations are so low and low, so slow and low that you can't hear them, said his father. Is it like a whisper? Kwame asked. Well, not really. A sound can be low in different ways. There are sounds that are low in volume, like a whisper, and there are sounds that are low in pitch. That means that the sound vibrations are slow. There can be sounds that are too high pitched. He made his voice high and squeaky as he said this, or too low pitched, he said in a deep rumbly tone for people to hear, but not for other animals. Elephants can hear those low pitched sounds without any problem. I have an idea, Kwame, said Professor Payne. Would you like to come with us to the field site? This is how Kwame got his chance to visit the elephants. Chapter three, into the forest. Kwame grasped his father's belt and followed him deep into the forest. The birds sang, caw, 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 above their heads. He heard a frog, ibbit, ibbit, in the underground. We've reached the first listening station, Kwame's father told him. I'll check the settings on the recording unit. Kwame walked around the edge of the clearing where they were standing, feeling each tree trunk as he passed. 
Soon he heard the thump of the recording equipment being lowered to the ground behind him. Professor Payne walked towards Kwame and placed a smooth metal box in his hand. Your father helped create these recording units. They help us learn about different sounds elephants make and how to tell the elephants apart. I can't wait to look at these sound data. Look at the sound? asked Kwame. How do you look at sound? I'll show you, said Professor Payne. Do you know what technology is? Technology is anything that people create to solve a problem, Kwame recited. His father had taught him that. Exactly, said Professor Payne. These recording units are my technology. They take measurements that tell us how loud or soft and how high-pitched or low-pitched a sound is. Scientists like me need a tool to help us understand and analyze the recordings. Those measurements are translated into pictures that we call spectrograms. Professor Payne paused. Kwame heard her rustling the bushes and then heard her scraping something into the dirt. I used a stick to draw one example of a sound representation in the dirt. Feel this pattern and tell me what type of sound you think I'm trying to communicate. Kwame knelt on the ground and Professor Payne helped him move his hand along the dirt ridge. The ridge dipped sharply down and then leveled off in soft, rolling curves. Kwame sat back on his heels and thought for a moment. I think the sound starts off very high, like the call of a bird, and then gets lower like a dog growling. It doesn't remind me of my drum. That would have more sharp ups and downs. Hey, that gives me an idea, Kwame exclaimed. I could make my own kind of spectrogram to communicate my Adwira drum rhythm to my cousin Kofi. If I could create something that represents my music, something that we could both feel instead of see, then we could be sure we were practicing the same rhythm. Kwame heard his father's footsteps approaching. That's a great idea, Kwame, his father said. Many people write musical notes on paper. Engineering a way to communicate through touching instead of seeing could work well for you and Kofi. You could use the engineering design process to help you. Kwame's father had told him about the engineering design process before. Kwame knew that he would need to ask questions, imagine solutions, plan and create his design and improve it. He couldn't wait to get started. Kwame, said Professor Payne, while we're here in the forest, why don't we walk a little further? Maybe we can inspire your drummer drumming rhythm with some live elephant noises. Kwame imagined the thump of the elephant's footsteps like the thwack of his drum and their piercing call like a trumpet. The group walked deeper into the forest. Suddenly, they heard a mother elephant and her calf, Kwame's father whispered. I can barely see them through the trees. Kwame held his breath as he listened. He could hear a soft, high call of the calf. It was the most wonderful sound he'd ever heard. Chapter four, representing sound. The next day, Kwame sat quietly in his room. He thought about how sound helped him understand the world. He thought about sound as vibrations and about the different sounds he could make with his drum. His thoughts were interrupted by the sing-song voice of his sister, Afua. Kwame, come help me with the fufu for dinner. Fufu, a mixture of plantains and yams, was one of Kwame's favorite dishes. He used a large post to mash the vegetables together. As he lifted the post, his sister turned the pot. They fell into a rhythm. Thump, slide, thump, slide. Kwame pictured himself at Aguira, pounding his drum with one hand and sliding his other palm across the surface. Thump, slide, thump, slide. Afua, Kwame said, listen. Thump, slide, thump, slide. If you had to represent that rhythm, what would it look like? Kwame, that's silly, she said. If I draw a picture of those sounds, you won't be able to see it. Maybe it doesn't have to be a picture. Maybe it could be a shape that I could feel. Will you try it with me? I'll try one too, Kwame said. Afua and Kwame began to work on their designs. Afua thought that the thump would be big and thick, kind of like a plantain. The skinny yams were long and thin. Maybe they could represent the slide. Kwame was busy scooping some of the fufu into a bowl. Remembering what Professor Payne had done, he used a spoon to carve a deep pointed wave for the thump and a shallow swoop for the slide. Afua, are you ready? Let's test our designs, Kwame said. Afua led him to her creation. Kwame ran his hands over the yams and plantains. Then he moved to the beginning and felt everything again. Is it thump, slide, slide, thump, thump, slide, slide, thump? He asked. Yes, cried Afua. Now I want to try yours. She giggled as her fingers moved over the sticky fufu. Once she reached the end of the pattern, she moved back to the starting point, just as she had seen Kwame do. Oh no, she cried. I erased the pattern. Hmm, said Kwame. That's not good, he giggled. I bet I couldn't send Kofi Fufu in the mail either. I'm going to work on some things in my room. 
For the rest of the afternoon, Kwame used the engineering design process to help him come up with a representation of his rhythm. He imagined carving a pattern in mud, but he knew hardened mud could be brittle and break. He imagined using wooden beads from one of his sister's old necklaces, but the beads seemed too small to represent the huge beats of the drum. Kwame imagined string and paper, blocks and sticks. Finally, Kwame thought he had a solution. It was time to plan and create his design. Later that evening, Kwame asked his father to help test the design. Kwame's father sat down with his drum and began to play. Thump, boom, thump, boom, do, do, ma. He paused and turned to Kwame. What do you think? It's not quite right. I, I think I should try to improve my design before I send it to Kofi, Kwame said. A few days later, after many changes and a few more tests, Kwame was ready to send his homemade spectrogram, a combination of string and blocks, to Kofi. Now, all he could do was wait. Chapter 5, Testing the Design Every day, Kwame practiced his drumming for Old Wira. He was impatient to hear from Kofi. Had he received the package? Finally, one evening, as Kwame was drumming, he heard the high-pitched ring ring of his father's cell phone. Yao, Kwame's father said, where are you calling from? At home? Ah, I see that phone reception has finally reached the village. Uncle Yao, thought Kwame, Kofi's father, he'll know if Kofi got my package. Kwame waved for the phone, but his father talked on and on with his brother about work and the family. Finally, the conversation swifted. Kwame has been practicing his drumming as well. I'm sure they'll make us very proud of Wira. Well, yes, I think that would be fine. Kwame, his father called. Kofi wants you on the phone. Kwame carefully took the cell phone that his father handed him. Hello, he said. He didn't hear anything. Disappointed, he started to hand the phone back when a familiar rhythm stopped him. Thwack boom boom, ma do do. Thwack boom boom, ma do do. Kofi was playing Kwame's rhythm. Kwame beamed with satisfaction. His father and Professor Payne had been right. All he needed to engineer a solution was his knowledge of sound and a lot of creativity. Chapter 6 Drumming Together. On the morning of Odwira, Kwame's family prepared to travel to his grandfather's village. He stepped into the Trotro, the city bus, with his arms around his drum and the kente cloth of his special Adwira robe cool against his skin. The Trotro was filled with people and noises, but none of the noises seemed as loud as the sounds coming from within Kwame. His heart beat loudly, his breath rushed in and out, and his knees rattled together. Would he and Kofi really be able to play together, though they'd never even practiced in the same room? His father's hand on his shoulder brought Kwame away from his worries. You will do a wonderful job, my son. I know it. The family stepped off the bus, greeted by the sounds and smells of old Wira. Kwame listened to the hustle and bustle around him. It reminded him of the forest. Parrots and frogs, he thought, listening to the calls of women selling their food and crafts. The elephants, he thought, hearing the low drum roll chatter of the crowd pierced from time to time by a child's cry. Kofi and Kwame wandered around the village, sampling tangy ground nut stew and spicy fragrant meat. The familiar tastes and smells took away Kwame's nervousness and replaced it with joy and excitement. Soon it was time to drum. Kwame and Kofi sat next to each other and began to play. Thwack boom boom, ma do do. Thwack boom boom, ma do do. Kwame felt